<laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Two Old Farts. My name is Chuck. And I'm Larry. I'm the, I don't know what I am. I always slurred you. Hey, sorry about <laughs> Sunday. Stuff was got away from me. My my youngest daughter's home from school from summer vacation. Well, she took the summer semester and then she's home. Now she's in between jobs, so she's kind of like hanging out with us. Didn't do the podcast Sunday. Yesterday, I didn't get home until like 5 o'clock, and then I had to help my daughter with something. She's going to be flying out to California to visit a friend of hers, so we had to do all the plane ticketing and, you know, all of that kind of jazz. And then by that point, it's so dang late, it's time to get ready to eat, and I had to order food. So, I mean, it was just cats and dogs living together. It was total kings. I understand. Monday's a, Monday's a busy day at work. The commander, he's been gone for like three weeks straight, TDY. And well, that's, that's a busy and time a, right now, too. Yeah. And we had a 2.30 meeting that ended at 3, and then he needed his commander sunk at 3 o'clock. And he, he kind of has ADD. He kind of squirrels on the conversation. He'll go down some rabbit holes. So our meeting can take 90 minutes sometimes. So you can get out of there till after four. And for some reason, traffic was unusually bad yesterday. I don't know why. I can't wait to be retired like you and not have to deal with that no more. I'm telling you. I'm re- that, that's what I like. That's why I said, when you asked me what I'm doing for my birthday, it's just another day and do what the hell I want to do. Yeah. So people, it's, for most of us, birthdays are just another day. But this is a milestone, ladies and gentlemen. This old fart is literally an old fart. He will be 80 years old, eight zero, eight decades, 80 times around the sun on Friday. Happy well, birthday, man. I feel like I've been around the sun about 80 times, too, sometimes. Happy yeah, birthday. Oh, here we go. Some plums. Can you hear this? So, Did you hear that? Do I? Did you hear the applause? I don't know why this won't play back. I hit the, see this mode caster duo thing that I've got. There's some buttons over here and it's got sound effects like there's some tickets, record scratch, and you can't hear any of that, can you? No, didn't hear any of that. Hmm. What about now? No. Can you hear that? No. This is crazy. I don't and know I what's got, going on. I don't know. I got what's... my hearing aid turned up too. So... I got to figure out why you can't hear that. Maybe your microphone's. I was supposed to come through the microphone or through the uh, system. Yeah, it should come through the system and it should be coming out of your speakers. Oh, forgot to turn this light on. There, got to have, got to have lights on so I can look beautiful. <laughs> this, this is what all the Instagram models have. They have all these lights and stuff on so they can look beautiful. Yeah, you need to look pretty. We got all them, all them friends out there looking at us and wondering what the hell's going on. One ugly old fart and one good looking fart, right? That's right. Because yeah, we literally have tens of fans out here that listen to us. What I'm saying. Well, I got to tell you, all these folks that listen to us are from Canada, whether it's about four or five or something like that, I can't remember now. Yeah, there's, yeah they've been from Ontario. Um, let me see if we got any going on this week in August. Yeah, um, they, they, no, they're from so Canada. Canada looking had, pretty good. At least what we did, um, we had South Africa this month so far in August. All right. Yeah, I've been watching the Little League softball and, and the baseball uh, tournament playoffs and so like this. Those teams from Canada are looking pretty damn good. Yep. I watched them today. And I was watching this one girl from North Carolina and playing softball. She's 13 years old. How tall do you think that young girl is? Six foot. Wow. That's impressive. High. Just, it's amazing how big these kids are now these days, you know. But then, then you see these guys that are like 14, 5, 5, 1. They get up and just smack the heck out of that ball. That's why I, I like watching them play and stuff like this. So, well, talking about birthdays, guess whose birthday is today? Today is August 6th. No, Uncle Michael. So yeah, we have to give, give a shout out to big old Uncle Michael there out in um, on the East Coast, uh, Connecticut or New Hampshire. I'm not sure exactly where they live out there now, but. Uh, so they want to California? No. So it, today's his birthday, and then tomorrow's your 
your favorite aunt on my side of the family. Not your mom's side, but my side. Well, I only have one favorite aunt. That's for sure. And there's only one living. Yeah. The so, process of elimination. so Aunt Carolyn, shout out to her. Get a happy birthday to her tomorrow. Happy birthday to the Yeah. So. It was on Friday. Yeah. And, and then your sister's coming up here pretty soon on the 20th. Yes, she is. And she's she's like you. She has, she's got to work on her birthday, too. So. So just, you know what? This year, this year I took my birthday off. Well, the day after the birthday was on Sunday, so I took Monday. That's the first time I've done that. Yeah. But then uh, next week we got two of your cousins coming in from California, Brooke and Shannon. I was looking forward to that visit. I was too until I found out I'm going to be in California next week. So you go on to the place that they're leaving, and we're going to miss each other. Yeah. So we got a big. Big dinner and everything planned over to Uncle Bobby's house next Friday. Uh, so that's, that's going to be pretty good. We get a chance to try to get the aunts and uncles to go. Uncle Leonard's coming down. Him and Ed Cherry is coming down. So looking forward to that. When you get Uncle Bobby and Uncle Leonard together, you just sit back and laugh because one's trying to outdo the other one. So I. Okay. <laughs> If you've got anything to say, because if you wait for a break in the conversation, that ain't even limited. And then you throw your mom in there with it and get her to talking. Oh, man. <laughs> you might well forget it. Hey, bring, yeah, bring, bring a little bit of uh, some liquor, bring some crown, that apple crown and some 7-Up, and make mom some drinks, get her a little loose. Uncle Bobby and I talked about that the other day. He's going to have some beer. And get, you know, there's some beer drinkers there. And he got a little she bourbon. She won't drink the beer. She'll yeah, drink got bourbon. Little, got some Crown Royal. So she'll drink Crown Royal and Coke or, or something like that. Well, you still have yeah. that apple thing that I gave you guys, right? Or yeah. Or just be drinking one. No, she still yeah, got get it. Some, get some 7-Up and that apple crown and see. She likes that. Yes. But it's, it's going to be a fun time. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to their visit and stuff like that. And Cassie is going to uh, barbecue some ribs. So that's that's going to be good. Uh, we'll see about that. Yeah, that's going to be good. I guarantee you. She loves to cook. She, she's a good cook. I don't mean she's any good at eating if she likes to cook. Do I? Liking to do something isn't an instant qualification for goodness. Just because she says she likes to cook doesn't mean she's a good cook. Well, I've had some of her stuff before. Okay. So, I, I can't speak to that. But yeah, yeah she, she's pretty good. So anyway, this gonna, it's going to be a fun time. And then to have them coming out from California and, and they're bringing their two, Brooke and Shannon, they have their Two each, two children each coming out with us. It's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Sorry. Sorry, you're going what to miss you? it. Oh, yeah. Man, that is pretty bad. So what do you do on October 13th? It's a Sunday. Monday is a holiday. It's Columbus Day. Or Indigenous I'm, People's Day. I don't, what think are you doing? I, I don't think I'm doing anything except sit in the house. What would you and Mom say to go on to see Clint Blount at Floral's Country Store? It's his 35th anniversary of his killing Tom. I'd say that'd be pretty damn good. What day was that? October, October 13th. 13th. You like Clint Black? I, I, I think we had this conversation before, but I thought you and I saw Clint Black once before downtown. You and I did at the Tobin Center. Yeah. Look at you yeah. with that good memory for almost 80 years old. Well, That's pretty stuff impressive. Just, sometimes stuff just comes around and sometimes it just hangs out in the cloud somewhere and I can't reach out and grab it. Well, she used to say, the sun's got to shine on the dog's ass sometime, right? There you go. I need, need to get something right. They were now yeah. and make it feel I good. Just sent you, I just sent you. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a couple of questions here. So we get talking about the answer. Them. Might not. What's your favorite childhood memory? What's what few things stick out to you when you were growing up? The last meetings, Tina Tidline on me. Um, who who tattled, um, who tattled on you? My sister. 
She was a snitch, people. She was a snitch. <laughs> no, you you wouldn't that? want her as a little baby sister. No, I, I, favorite memory. Man, you had to spring that on me. Uh, yeah. yeah. And this is a guy that this, writes himself a note to skip school and then leaves it on the counter for his mom to find it. Hey, nobody said I was, you know, completely. Well, it Maybe it was a cry for help so I could get quick. Man, favorite childhood memory? Up to what age? Up to, like, age 12? Uh, anytime while you was at home, up 16, 17, I said, you left home about 18, 19. I tried um, to kick me out before then, but didn't have too much luck on it. You told me that's my memory. When y'all got me my first motorcycle. Well, that was in Warner Island, Georgia? Yeah. You got me my first motorcycle that I'm feeling that spent more time not running than it did when. And then you, you traded it in and got me that a new Suzuki RM. Yeah. Driving you scared the hell out of me that one day. I'm out looking for you. And you uh-huh. riding in and jumped out off of that cliff in between those two damn pine trees. I think you must have about uh, was, that much space that, in between the handlebars and those trees. Yeah, that that cliff, it was what, 30, 40, 50 feet, almost yep. straight up. Yeah. And it went flat. And yeah, about 15 feet back from the edge, it, there was a trail and it went between these two giant pine trees. And so you had to hit that just right. And I'd get up, get a little air, maybe lean a little bit to the side, pick it back up, and then shoot. You only, only got to do it once or twice, and then you're like, you're done. But you, you did it pretty good. And then you had, when we was in Georgia, what kind of uh, bicycle was that that you had that you that we had to buy you? Wow. Uh, uh, it was a ramp. Yeah. That was, that got stolen. Yeah. Just like the motorcycle that got stolen. <laughs> yeah, the motorcycle we got stolen here in Texas, all right. His bike got stolen. I'd have got that motorcycle back a lot quicker if your mom had done what I asked her to do. That's true. But you know what? That bicycle, I could not stop from breaking handlebars off of that thing. Remember from doing all the BMX stuff? Yeah. I would, I would, you know, go over jumps and all of that stuff. And as much as you can get going on the bicycle. And just coming down, I would just hit with such force it would just break the handlebars right off the gooseneck, man. And we we even got a double gooseneck, remember? Yeah. And it it and we even got them welded, and then they would still break them shits. <laughs> I don't know how many sets of goosenecks and handlebars I went through, ladies and gentlemen. I went through a lot. Yes, he did. And they didn't make his sister cure the bike home. Uh, that's a different story. Yeah, it did take place in Georgia. So, yeah. I was, um, did I lose the key? I couldn't, I couldn't unlock the bike from the bike. I think. No, it wasn't, think, it wasn't to the bike rack because then Tina wouldn't have been able to tear it. I'm going to chain. You had a chain on and it. I, yeah, but I, I lost the key, something. So I had to go home to get the bike. And I don't know why this made sense to me at the time, but I was. 10, 10 years old. I'm not living because we were living in a... And for some reason, this made sense to me, ladies and gentlemen. I left my sister to watch the bicycle while I went home to get the key. So while... And I told her to stay with the bicycle. Again, bratty little sister thought it would be best if she carried the bike home. But she decided to do this after I was gone. So by the time I get back, I can't find her because she's gone. Did the cops pick her up or something? Is that how this whole thing? Yeah, the police. She was walking home with that, carrying that bike, and the police picked her up. And they and thought she home. stole it? Well, Robert, that was a it's good Jan- time, though. Hey, that's Gen X for you right there, people. <laughs> that's Generation X. Uh, when the sun came up, you were out of the house playing, drinking water from people's hoses. You only came home to eat lunch, and at the door you went. That's there right. were no video games because they didn't exist. Life was a little different back then, huh? But some of it good, was, some of it not so good. I mean, there's good and bad from those days. There's more good than there was bad. I think young adults, children had more opportunity to do things because they didn't have things handed to them so much like this. They, I mean, you got everything on social media. Almost everyone's got a phone. You got all these 
TikTok and all that kind of stuff. Instead of getting out and doing physical things and having fun and and friends, and I, I, sometimes I think you kind of limit yourself just a little bit with uh, your friendship by not having yeah, that one-on-one. I'm going to agree. It does spot you socially because you're not interacting with your friends. And even when you are, the majority of the time, it looks like this. They're all on their phone. And they're all sitting mm-hmm. together. Yep. Uh, you know, that's, that's a, lot of, a lot of stuff you can learn from it. You know, it's like today. I, w- I went to Taco Bell for, for your mom and I. So I ordered a Supreme Crunch Wrap. I wanted it with Fresca. You know what Fresca is at Taco Bell? It, it's a, like a diet type thing. Is it Nothing squeeze with, or something like that? Like no cheese and stuff like that. And I said, no, I want the cheese on it. I, and I want the pickle of the gal, but I didn't want any sour cream. So anything that has like a milk product aspect to it, when you say Fresca, it leaves that out. So it was going to leave it oh, out I sour thought cream. Oh, I the drink. You talking about no, the no, the the Crunch Supreme Wrap Fresca style. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no Fresca style. Fresca style it has to do with, in this case, with uh, like milk products. No milk products, and like the cheese that leaves the cheese off and, it, and the sour cream because they're like the dairy products, right? That's mixed in with it. First so, of all, we'll ladies go and gentlemen, I got to interrupt you real quick, Dad. I did a quick Google search, and it's pronounced Fresco. So anyway. It came, with, it came up with Taco Bell. Fresco is a stylistic enhancement for various Taco Bell products in which yep. the item's cheese and sauce is replaced with a healthier alternative. So go ahead. So anyway, I go in there. First off, they don't take your orders anymore. You got to go to one of those damn machines and punch it in that right. So the young girl that comes up, I said, you're talking to an old fart here. I said, I don't want to use that damn thing. And she said, I'll help you. So she comes around, we ordered it. And I said, I want it fresco, fresco style. Fresco. She says, oh. So she says, okay. So she does it. Then it pops up. No cheese. I said, no, I want the cheese. Well, that's yeah. not fresco style. <laughs> so you said you dairy know, products. Where do you think cheese comes from? But I have no idea what the hell it was. So when I got home, I had to look it up and see exactly what it meant. And I said, no, I want the pickle de gal. I just, I want the cheese on it. I just don't want any sour cream. <laughs> so she laughed at me and I gave her a tip. She didn't want to take it. And I said, no, you earned this one. <laughs> you know, so anyway, then I said, how about my motor discount? She said, yeah, I can do that for you. So she gave her, I said, Next time I'll just come to the drive through where I can talk to you. Usually I don't go to a drive through You know, we're hearing aids. And, you know, we're hearing loss. Sometimes you always don't hear that well. And I don't talk very loud. Like to me right now, I'm, to you, I'm probably talking real low. But to me, I sound like I'm screaming, you know, loud. Because I got my hearing aid turned up on my cell phone just a little bit too. So I usually don't go to a drive through for those reasons. But I'll probably start doing that now so I don't have to. But I know what fresco means. So I'll make sure fresco. I don't order it. Not an E. I mean, A, hey, it's fresco, not fresco. Fresco is a drink. It's, it's spelled F R E S C A, fresco. Not bad. It's F R E S C O. So, anyway, that was that was my experience with Taco <laughs> Taco Bell today. But they, they have, you know, it's fast food, but it's pretty good food. But I like, I like when I go there, the people are real friendly. So, that's what. That's what matters to me. Yeah, you know, I like that young girl. Instead of saying, okay, tell you, figure it out yourself, or whatever type of thing. She comes out and she does it and bring it up four or five different times. And finally, I got it right for her. She was doing it right. I just wasn't communicating it right. So, of course, I got home. Guess what kind of lecture I got? Your mom lectured me <laughs> without knowing what it meant before I went there. But I was telling her, I said, you know what I mean? She said, yeah. I said, when I, when I have a habit of we're going to go someplace and order food for her, I'll make her write it down. 
So that way I can give it to the cashier and they can read it exactly what she wants, how she wants it. Instead of me trying to remember because half the time I'm going to forget. And the other half, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Damn shoot. You don't know what you're talking. <laughs> so anyway, well, what do you think about the vice president pick for, uh, for Kamala Harris? She picked Tim Waltz from Minnesota. That's about all I know. And that's about all I'm going to talk about. Like I said, we don't yeah. do politics on this show. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Like, as they said in uh, Kinderman, stay classy, some the other one. Is there what? Stay classy. So anyway. You haven't seen, you haven't seen the movie Anchorman, have you? No, I haven't. You need to watch it. It's it's a really good movie. Very I've, fun. I've been watching this, this, some of these shows on Netflix and stuff like that. But I've been looking at the football schedules. Coming up, football schedule. That I was looking at the UTSA schedule. I, I think they're going to have a pretty good season this year. I think they're going to be about nine and three or ten and three, something like that. They're looking at their schedule, I said, the only ones I think that it's going to be a hard schedule for them is going to be Houston, Army, and Tennessee. It's fine. But I, I think everybody else they're going to play. I think they have a good good shot up. Those three games, I think, will determine how successful they are. And Texas State, I think, is going to be loaded this year, too. They only have two games that I see on their schedule that I think is going to be really hard. One of them is, uh, is UTSA. They play them the second game of the season. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a good game. That might be one of the tougher games. And the other one, I think, is Troy. The old, we saw that game there. last year. Yeah, we did. They they got Troy on the road because we had them at and we lost there. But I, I think I, I think Texas State's gonna have a one heck of a good season from, uh, for the coach. They yeah, got but we there. don't know who we've got at quarterback. Yeah, I I don't remember the kid's name, is, but the, the quarterback last year that graduated. So I don't think he, it's going to be like five year, six year starter. Right. Yep. Same way with the UCSA yeah. quarterback. But I, I think. I think they're going to be all right. I think they have the depth and they, you know, play. So I think they're going to have a good season. I think they're going to be about 10 and 2, something like that. The only two games I, I think on their schedule that I see could be a troublesome would be UTSA and Troy. But they, what they don't know about Louisiana Monroe, they play UTSA the second game of the season. So that's going to be a good one. And they're playing UTSA a home. Wait. Would not know. Yeah, Texas State. Yeah, it's at Texas State. Texas State. Texas State Stadium. It's like it's at three. Yeah, it's three and a half. It's on ESPN Plus. So it's gonna get a game. And then, boy, and then and UTSA got opened up with Houston. Then you get what game five? They gonna play Tennessee. I, I I'm excited about seeing all these schools step up. Start playing some of the bigger schools. The bigger schools. I understand the logic. Understand the logic. But the bigger schools mm -hmm. playing some of those small schools. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a little different. It's money. It's, it's, money. it's money for the program, and it's also an opportunity to get your school out in front of an audience nationally that normally would not see the team play because they're in the same market. So. Yeah. Speaking of that, point, and it, and it shows and it shows these players. It's like, look, you can compete against these guys. They don't have that yeah. much bigger, faster, whatever than you. So that's when you have to listen to your coaches and bring your technique and your fundamentals, and you can compete. Yeah, and and that's why I got these guys. Like when you look at the UTSA schedule, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games so far. That's either ESPN. SEC Network or Fox Sport. So, because they're playing those things, then you, you look at the, the Texas State right there. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six games for sure that's going to be televised. ESPN is one, two, three, four, five, six of the games on the ESPN program. So, while they're stepping up, it brings in some extra revenue for them where they can use that money for facilities and things like that. But also it propels them, because you're getting a lot of attention. These 
there's some players that will come to these schools that probably hadn't heard of them or want to play and stuff like that. So. It's a win-win. The program gets the money. The kids and the coach get the exposure and the experience. And the team that's paying them to play, they get an easy W. And, and they're yeah. not always, not always, but it happens. You know, I was, I was thinking that uh, at the SEC schedule for, I think, I, I think we're going to do really well. I think we're going to be about a 10 and 2 or 9 and 3 this year. Uh, and we might surprise some people and do better than that. You think 11 and 1 will be as good as we will, as will be the best? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking and I'm pretty confident. I think we'll be a 10 and 2 team this year. I think it's going to be Georgia, and and it could be LSU. Well, I think we can beat Georgia. I think we can too. But Georgia didn't have to reload like we did. There's there's been some upheaval. Yeah, we've had turnover on the coaches side. Georgia not so much. They're steady Eddie, you know. And guess and Georgia's in in the Little League World Series, and they're in. The, they're not in the playoffs, the finals yet. But guess whose son is pitching for Georgia? Kirby Smart's. Kirby Smart's son. Boy, look pretty good. He he looks like a dad a little bit too, but they pretty good little pitcher. Yeah, so, I, I I think it's going to be good. I I'm looking forward to it. I I think uh, Georgia and Tennessee probably may, or maybe I'll, I'm not worried about but, t- Tennessee. Oklahoma uh, might be, I, I'm not sure, I'm, but we're going to go see that game. That's, that's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Gonna, you know why I'm not worried about Tennessee? Because it looks like it's going to be an 11 o'clock game. Okay. But if it's a night game, then you got to worry. But we're playing in Knoxville, so Tennessee has that reputation, and they're playing at home is just like us, or, or Auburn, we're playing Auburn now. At, at Auburn, they seem to get up for the games. More so, the fans fans get a lot into the game. I think South Carolina too this year. Yeah, we played them October twelfth. Yep, just Burton. before. Yep, just before Tennessee, and then we've got LSU the weekend after that, right? Yep. There's no bye week we, before LSU. Normally, there's a bye week. We have a bye week before LSU. November second we bye week. Yeah, we play South Carolina, Tennessee, Missouri bye week. LSU. Mercer, Oklahoma, then Auburn. Is it Mercer? Are they Tigers also? Mercer is a, a home game. Is Mercer, are they Tigers? Is that their mascot? Because on my calendar, it just shows Tigers, not Crimson. Oh. So, so I'm wondering if their mascot is a Tiger. It probably is. I, I, I don't remember. Yeah. Hey, old man, we got to wrap this up. We're going to go for 30 minutes now. Yeah. So we did pretty good for a rambling bunch of old forwards <laughs> with no real agenda. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, I'm going to put this on my calendar for October 13th. Clap like that'll be a pretty good show with that Flores. All you got to do is accept the calendar invite. I'm already sent it to you. I might be able to do that. I'm not sure. I hope so. Anyway, you have a good week and have a good safe trip next week. All righty. Thank you, sir. Hopefully we'll see you Friday or Saturday for your birthday. You got it. Love you, son. Love you. Love you. Y'all take care, everybody.